Welcome back, everyone, to the Play Zone YouTube channel. Um, and considering how well the uh, rating kits video did, um, back here today with um, rating uh, Premier League football stadiums. A bit of a different one, taking into account the history of the ground, the atmosphere, just the way it's built, its history, and the like. Um, I guess overall, just, just how it is as a ground in comparison to others. And there, there are some stinkers, I guess, on here. I know there's also some some really, really strong candidates up there for, for the best stadium in the Premier League, but. It's one of the best leagues in the world, and that's why, because of these grounds that are so historic, that are so full of atmosphere and the like, that it, it's hard to go past a few of them. Um, so ranking them now 20 to 1, uh, let's start with number 20. So number 20 is going to be Kenil Kenilworth Wolf Road, um, new stadium this year, Luton Towns ground. The memes have all been out there about, you know, the, uh, the way into the backyard. I've also seen some awful tickets where um, pillars in the way of the, of the vision there. Obviously, it's a really almost like a, a league one league two sort of ground national league type ground but i like it you know i like this sort of grounds in a way um but for the premier league the standards high it's a, it's a really high level you can't be walking through back gardens to get to an away end um obviously definitely has its place and it'll bring a, an interesting atmosphere um to, a, to the games in the premier league but i think it needs to be revamped a little bit um to keep up with the with the modern trend of the premier league but um with all that being said yeah it is sitting in in 20th now we come to position 19 and an interesting one, this one. Um, I've ended up going with the Vitality Stadium. Um, it could have been easily been 20th. Um, a a semi-modern stadium has been sort of rebuilt in, in recent times, but really small grounding, only ho yeah, holding 11,000 people at capacity. Sort of lacks that sort of atmosphere. There's no real buzz around the Vitality Stadium. I know Bournemouth haven't been great in the Premier League um, in previous iterations. Obviously last year they did very, very well, but the atmosphere isn't quite there. The history is not quite there. Um, I guess the positive is the fans feel like they're on top of each other. It's a really tight, compact stadium, but um, there isn't much real character at this ground. It, it lacks uh, the character which makes other stadiums stand out. Um, quite a small ground, and as Mark Goldby has said it many times, shouldn't be in the Premier League because of how small it is. But um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it fits the Premier League. Like similar to Luton and Kenilworth Road, it's not the big grand stadiums that we're used to in the Premier League. So. As such, I'm going to rate it at 19th place. Now, coming to the 18th position, I've got the Brentford Community Stadium, or I guess now it's known the G-Tech Stadium. Um, we're a recently renovated stadium. Obviously, Brentford moved across back in 2020. Um, it's a very new stadium. I like the design. I've, I've actually been there. Um, haven't seen a game there, but I've been there and driven past it a few times. A very well-designed stadium. It's, it's architecturally quite sound and, and quite modern, which is which is nice to look at. But once again, not massive. It's a 17 sort of thousand. Um, capacity stadium at, at max there um i do like how tight and compact it is uh so it gives that feeling of you know a bit of pressure on the players but um the atmosphere isn't always quite there obviously the the liverpool win the arsenal win the man united win over the last sort of 12 to 24 months the, the atmosphere was through the roof but um on any given week it's not like, not the greatest atmosphere there at, at brentford um obviously no stadium to be slouched at um a beautiful looking ground a modern type ground Obviously, it lacks a sort of history that you know helps the stadium out and and, and give it that character. But um, yeah, I think just for that reason, the sort of lack of atmosphere that they're there is most of the time. I'm going to place the, the Brentford Community Stadium in 18th place. Now, coming in at position 17, this might surprise a few people. Um, I am going to go with the London Stadium. So, obviously, the, the London Olympics in 2012. This was this is where it was held, um, but it's been taken over by West Ham in 2016. But um, it's a hard stand to keep up. Obviously, the London Stadium's a beautiful ground, stadium. I just don't think it's made for football. You've got a lot of spaces that have left empty because it doesn't suit a football-type stadium. The separation from the pitch to the fans is is large and it feels a bit disconnected. West Ham, you know, very vocal, passionate fans and it struggles to build an atmosphere because of, I think, how separate the fans feel from the ground and the players. Um, obviously, it's been great cup success and cut runs in the last few years but still doesn't quite feel like the same as a bowling ground and that place was a truly a beautiful stadium it, it was historic it had character i think it had connection to the west ham fans so this ground may have the same thing in the future but at the moment it just doesn't feel like a west ham stadium at the current point in time um obviously architecture wise beautiful very modern but it's not a football ground for me there's too much separation uh, from the pitch and the players to the fans, that they're a passionate bunch. Even the away end, it just doesn't feel like there's it's positioned well at all. Um, despite holding 63,000 people, I'm going to chuck the London Stadium, West Ham's you know, new ground, in 17th place. Now the next ground in 16th position is Turf Moor, the newly promoted uh, Burnley side. 
to be honest, this ground could have been a bit lower down. It's nothing special about the ground. Um, I just like when the team are up, the atmosphere is high there at Turf Moor. Um, quite an old sort of fashion ground in one half of the ground, but then they've got the new sort of um, display screens on one end there. So modernising a bit with some old fashioned design. I like that. I'm a really a big fan of that. Um, but again, Turf Moor, nothing special about it. Um, the away end is quite nice. It's got that old-fashioned sort of setup there, and the the home fans get quite um, noisy and and chirpy there. Um, like with the away fans, I like that part of the ground. Um, Character-wise, it's got a bit of character about it. So it's an older ground, so it's got a bit about it, but nothing really special at this stadium. And as such, it sort of could sit anywhere in the sort of bottom six, seven positions. I've been generous and given them the sixteenth position here in my ratings, but um, uh, definitely definitely a nice ground, but nothing that really stands out. Nothing that really separates from other grounds around England. It's a you know, all sort of football same, sort of that rectangle shape. Um, um, but definitely definitely amongst there, uh, as a quality Premier League ground with 22,000 people as a capacity there. Um, but yeah, the atmosphere isn't remarkable and as such, it sort of sits down there amongst the bottom six and 16th. Now following that in 16th, and now coming to 15th is the Amex Stadium. Now I've been lucky enough to sit there and, and watch a game in the Amex and watch Brighton play. Um, the ground is beautiful from the outside. It's a, it's a modern ground, the, the Amex Stadium. Uh, it sits 31,800 people to be uh, to be a rough estimate there. Um, but despite Brighton having some great performances there and, and being up and about on many occasions, the atmosphere isn't just quite there compared to some of the, the other bigger, uh, I guess, more well-renowned stadiums. Um, doesn't have much history as, as a new ground, so it sort of loses that set of character. But over the next few years, if Brian continue to perform the way they're performing, we could see the Amex grow a bit of a character, grow a bit of a history, and something to associate with the ground. But as it currently stands, it sort of lacks that atmosphere. It's a newer ground. It is a beautiful ground. That's why it's been pushed up upon, uh, amongst many stadiums. Um, the seating's really well, well designed as well. The away end is in a quite nice position where it gets that connection with the fans, uh, both teams. Um, there's not a bad set in the house, I can tell you that. Um, and a really nice design stadium, but just, yeah, without that atmosphere, it can't be pushed up the, the ladder at the moment and the lack of history and um, real character about the grounds. That's why it sort of stays there in 15th, but in the next few years, we could be changing that ranking um, with some history that Brighton could make at the Amex Stadium. Now, this could come to a shock for many, but in the 14th position, I'll have the Emirates Stadium. Now hear me out, I, I know Arsenal are a big team, they, they win a lot of games, the crowd's been good in recent, in recent uh, years, I guess the last year or so, definitely them being uh, being very successful in winning, but compared to Highbury, it's just not the same stadium. It's a modern ground, I get that, they spent a lot of money on it, but similar to West Ham, it's le to a lesser extent though, there, there's that lack of connection, the, the fans and the seats are a bit away from, from the pitch there, a bit separate. Um, Obviously a beautifully designed stadium, a really big stadium, but at the top there you can definitely feel some disconnect between the fans and the pitch. Um, and through many YouTube videos I've seen, there is a bit of a disconnect there being so high up and so away from the action. Um, obviously Highbury had so many memories and, and so many great players come through there and had so much character and history that it's a shame that, and it's probably a, a harder ranking similar to West Ham, that you've gone from an old ground with history to a ground that's, I guess, newer, hasn't had many trophies won there, not being as successful. So. Um, the character isn't quite there with the new Emirates Stadium, obviously a state-of-the-art ground, but the atmosphere hasn't quite been the same. Is that a part of them not being as winning of a team? Probably, because the atmosphere has lift, lifted in the last year or so, but um, it definitely can't go up there amongst some of the top in the Premier League just because of the lack of atmosphere, because of the lack of history and character in this ground. But like I said with the Amex in the previous um, ranking there, sitting in 14th now but it could be pushed up um, very quickly due to the atmosphere increasing over the next few years because they're looking like they're in the right direction Arsenal um, but but definitely a, a ground that just doesn't uh, for me sit a, in, in a top echelon stadiums in the Premier League at this current point in time. Now moving into 13th position um, maybe a bit of a different one the Molyneux Stadium the Wolverhampton Wanderers home ground um, seating 31,750 uh, people at capacity um, sort of like your stock standard football ground that's that rectangular football ground shape I like the big terraces at both ends I'm not a fan though of the away fans sitting I guess all over uh, that far stand there from the commentary position that were over the bottom floor I'd like it to be sort of section blocked off but that's just a preference of my own um, the atmosphere though at Molyneux is always solid and when Wolves are up and about and they're, and they're competing it's always a really really boisterous loud atmosphere um, the fans there 
a, a really good, especially the Jack Harris stand there behind the goal. They're really up and about for it. Um, I know in recent years with, with the joint of the Premier, they've had some temporary seating um, as well. I'm not a big fan of that either. It sort of takes away from the ground and, and its aesthetic design. Um, uh, obviously, one of the older sort of grounds that hasn't had much work done to it, obviously, recently to increase the, the, the height of the stands, but overall, quite an older design ground. I don't mind it, but it's nothing special about it. I think the atmosphere itself uh, and some of the fans and and the, the old school designer stadium gets it as bonus marks. That's why it kicks, kicks it above some of the newer stadiums. And as such, it's sitting in 13th place for me. Now we come to the 12th spot and I've gone with the Etihad Stadium. Um, all the memes, all the jokes, empty had or can't fill their seats, 30,000 empty seats, all this stuff. Well, that, that time is officially over now. Um, the Etihad Stadium is a beautiful stadium. It is a modern ground. Um, it towers, towers up and, and over um, people. Um, huge stadium. Have driven past it a few times and, and seen it a few times. And when in Manchester, beautiful ground, uh, a massive ground. Would love to go and see a game there one day. Um, but now that they're a winning team. This stadium does fall out, and the 50, 30,000 capacity is reached. Um, a really modern type of ground. Right? There's a, a beautiful seat around the ground. I don't think there's a really bad seat in the house there. And the atmosphere, if it was better, it'd be way higher in this list for me, but they're still lacking that atmosphere the Eddie had. And, you know, I don't really, compl- I wouldn't really blame them because they're winning so convincingly by so many goals at home that there's not much, much to be, you know, really up and about for other than for a goal. So between goals is a really sort of qu- quieter ground, a more docile of a, of a ground, but it's a beautiful piece of architecture, a lovely ground. It's a modern ground, in, in, in my opinion, but now that it's filled out and over the years, they keep winning, they keep producing on this. The atmosphere is going to keep lifting and like their team, it'll keep improving. And I think the times of the empty hat and no atmosphere is slowly sort of fading away because the had now has turned into a quite a lovely ground um, in the Premier League and, and up there with some of the best. But um, over time, if the atmosphere improves, we could be looking at a sort of a, a top 10 type uh, stadium. But at the moment for me, they're sitting in 12th place. In 11th place, uh, again, might be a bit of a controversial. I've got with Bramwell Lane, Sheffield United, the newly promoted team. I've put them in 11th here. It's a really nice sort of old school type ground. Uh, 32,000 capacity there. I love that the away end, how the away end situated behind that goal there. Um, always a loud atmosphere. They're really up and up for their games there. Um, most seats seem to be decent. I know there are some awful seats in, in each um, behind the goal terraces due to the way the stadium's built. You can miss half the ground apparently. Um, so that's a big take take down from this uh, from the stadium. But it's an older type stadium. It has a lot of character about it. The fans are always really really loud. The atmosphere is always great in there. And I love the positioning of the. I'm really big on the positioning of like where away fans are positioned in in the context of the ground. And they do it very well there at Bramwell Lane. Um, a lovely sort of older type stadium um, and definitely that connection between the, the fans and, and the players on the pitch is there. So for me, it's got to be in 11th place. Um, if some of the seats were better, it could be in a top 10 for me. Now coming to the 10th position, I'm going with the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I was tossing and turning this one here. It could have been for me 1 or could have been 20th or so. I ended up putting it sort of 10th. It's a new stadium. It's a beautiful, massive ground. I'm going to see it now in a couple of weeks' time and hopefully we have that content up on the channel um, through through a tour if if all goes to plan. Um, one of the state-of-the-art grounds, right? They, they built on half of the old white uh, Hart Lane um, ground there, 62,850 at its capacity. Uh, as it's state-of-the-art, it's got all the features, a massive ground. Um, it looks like not, not a bad seat in there. Uh, I love how big the away end is. So you get a lot of fans in there. Um, and when Tottenham are up and about, which I haven't really been yet in this stadium, I can imagine that atmosphere will be through the roof. Just a shame, and since they've been there, they haven't been performing as, I guess, as well as they would have, would have hoped Tottenham, but um, a great ground, decent atmosphere, obviously state-of-the-art um, um, type of ground, and uh, as such, I guess the lack of history sort of hurts it, the lack of character, because it hasn't really had time to develop that yet. Um, just reduces that but for me it sits nicely in 10th place the 10th best Premier League stadium alrighty we are now into the top half so it's sitting in number 9 for me it's got to be Nottingham Forest the city ground this ground is amazing again another old school type stadium you've got your your big high terraces you've got your your low round seating as well the away fans and that away bay there really get back and forth with some of the home fans um, it's a really loud ground and when they're up and about there 
it is, it is a scary place to go. He has a United fan um, saying United go there a few times last season. It's a tough place to go, it seems. It's, they're always up. It's always a loud atmosphere. It's always a, a really a 12th man type feel there. Um, and it's always loud, it seems. And I love that for my grand. You want that atmosphere. You want that energy and, and that character to be developed. And it seems that this grand definitely has a lot of character. It has a lot of history. The club has a lot of history. And as such, it, it deserves to be in a top 10 position. It could have been higher in my mind, but I sort of just like the way it fell here. Um, fitting over 30,000 people, but it always feels like more than that. I keep saying it's an awesome atmosphere and it must be a great place to play. An old school type of ground, but they do it very, very well. Um, great seating in there as well. Um, and for me, it sits in number nine. And now for me, number eight, um, on the list of uh, my top Premier League stadiums, it's got to be Stanford Bridge. Um, it does get a lot of stick for having a lack of atmosphere, but uh, when Chelsea are up and, and performing well, that place is a hard place to go. It's always bouncing in there, um, and, and the Blues really do feed off the, the home crowd there. And you saw when they had those restrictions on players, um, on fans in the stadium due to the Roma Branovic ownership, it did lose that sting a bit. But I'm, this year, I'm assuming it will come back with some improved performances for Chelsea, um, exceeding just over 40,000 people capacity. It's a proper football stadium, right? Um, it's a nicely designed ground, some big high stands and some close to the ground to the atmosphere. It really feels like a true proper English football stadium. Um, the away fans in the corner, they're tucked away is also a, a great little uh, little trick there. I like that, you know, tucking away the away fans, keep them in a corner. Um, always a great loud crowd, an older type stadium, which I always love as well. I love the older type stadiums um, and they've kept it in good nick. They've, they've renovated it well when they needed to and it's just a really nice ground. and. As such, it sits perfectly well in position eight for me. In position seven, again, it might be another controversial call. I'm going with Old Trafford. Manchester United ground, the biggest ground in the Premier League, fitting over 74,000 people. Um, obviously, in recent years, the atmosphere hasn't quite been there, not as, not as winning. I'll be sore last year when Ten Hag got his team playing some great football. The atmosphere was there. Um, a lot of the time, the, the home atmosphere isn't as quite as good because of, there is a lot of tourists at the ground at times and that probably does take away from the atmosphere, but that Stratford end has got to be up there, I guess, maybe the top three home ends in the Premier League. It really sucks that ball into the net and you've heard players say that it is a, hard to defend that end because of how how the crowd is and how much they suck that ball into the back of the net. Um, obviously, as the biggest ground, it's got that atmosphere. It's got the history as well. It's an older ground. Even the character, you know, the, the slope pitch, the pitch that slopes up and slopes down. Um, the fans are close to the ground. It's been an older stadium. It's been around for many years now. They've gradually built it up. It, it is truly a classic stadium and it is a staple uh, of a tour that a football fan must go on. Um, lucky enough to tour through the stadium. It is beautiful. It is massive. I think over the years it does have a bit of renovation, though it is getting a bit old and a bit tired, but. As a football ground goes, as the memories go, uh, as the pitch goes, uh, it is one of the best in the Premier League. And in recent years, it sort of fell away due to the lack of atmosphere and lack of winning, I guess. But that character, that history is always going to be there. And as such, it's, it's nicely in position eight for me. Now coming to sixth place, we're going with Villa Park. And I'm surprised I didn't put this one higher, but I love watching Villa games half the time just because of the crowd. It is a 42,500 capacity stadium. But once again, like many other you know, successful grounds, it feels like more people. It is always loud. That whole end is one of the best. That's going to be up there with Old Trafford, one of the best home ends. They suck that ball in as well. They are loud. They are they're up and about. And it's an older type stadium. You've got your four major stands. The away ends tucked nice in the corner. They like that again. Tuck the away fans away. Um, There's a great connection between the fans and the players. It is, it is a beautiful old ground. It's got character. It's got history. Um, and is up there with some of the older grounds that are that are some of the most well kept as well. It's a well kept ground, beautiful ground, beautiful character. Um, atmosphere is always at a peak it's when they're winning as well. Like last year, you see how loud it gets over there at Villa Park, and that's such for me. It is sitting nicely in the sixth position. All right, we finally got to the top five, and I may have made some road calls by now, and may have got people, a few people disliking, clicking off the video. But in fifth place to me, it's got to be St James's Park. A true coliseum of a, of a football ground. It is massive that there's an end there behind the goal with a massive high stand that goes sort of four tiers up and the away fans are once again tucked away out of the place. I think that ruins, I guess, the engagement between fans, but I love how they just kick the away fans to the side and stick them right up the top there. It is very funny. 
Um, the ground is beautiful, just massive. It is, as I said, a coliseum of sort of football grounds. Um, the fans are always right behind their team, even in the dark days, like Steve Bruce days, and when they weren't winning football games. Whenever they're up, whenever they score, it is a loud ground. It is a hard ground to go and play. Um, a true fortress for them out there. Um, and with 52,500 people capacity, it's a massive ground that can fit as many people in as possible. And it's now that they're winning as well, it's a great atmosphere. It's a great ground. It's a massive ground. Um, it's one of the best in the Premier League, to my opinion. And um, watching uh, games uh, on television there just seems like I just want to be there. I want to be a part of that atmosphere because it is one of the best in the Premier League. And as such, I've got it in the fifth position. The ground I have in the fourth spot is Craven Cottage, Fulham's ground. This, for me, is a pinnacle of a ground. You've got the old-fashioned um, part of the ground there and then the new stand now, um, the Riverside stand that they've just recently put together, sits in the Thames there. Um, 30,000 people capacity stadium if that Riverside stand is filled up. Um, a beautiful ground. That, that, that The cottage in the corner of that stayed, the history there behind it is beautiful. The way the players walk out in that corner there. Again, the fans are on top of the, the pitch at fields at times. Got parts of old, parts of new. They developed the ground really, really nicely. It's a well kept ground. It has so much history, so much character. The atmosphere is decent. I don't think it's exceptional. That's why it's not any higher than this spot. But I just love the mixture of both old, past, and present. It's just, it's a lovely ground. Um, and when Fulham are winning games, I and mean, Fulham up and about, that atmosphere matches it. Lovely looking ground, positioned so beautifully in London. Um, and as such, I had to put it in the fourth position. Just a great ground. We have finally now gotten to the top three positions. Um, two Merseyside teams and also a London club. And that London club is Crystal Palace. And that London club, Crystal Palace, is the Selhurst Park. And they're going to be my third spot. Um, very close to, to getting even higher, but I guess it's a smaller ground, 25,000 capacity. But once again, like most of these smaller grounds, you feel like there's more than just the 25,000 people. They cram all in nice and tight in there. Um, recent renovations, but it's an older style ground. You can see that the architecture is a bit older, has a bit more character, a bit more life about it. The way the players walk from different rooms, they don't all fit in one room. I like that. It's old, it's old fashioned, um, and it's lovely that that home end as well with the the ultras, I guess, um, for Crystal Palace all staying there for 90 minutes, chanting loud. It's at the one of the best. Actually, you know, it is the best atmosphere in the Premier League on its day. It is. Uh, a really loud and, and boisterous crowd there um, and Crystal Palace plays some good football, it, it'll follow that. Um, I like, this. I just like how old it is, how old, old fashioned it is. It's so well maintained, it's got history, it's got character to it and that's such, a, just had to be for me in the top three. The atmosphere and the history go hand in hand and for that for that amazing reason, it's in the top three. Now we have the top two, Everton, Liverpool, their two grounds, who lands in second. For me, it has to be the oldest ground in the Premier League, Goodison Park. Um, just falling short of their Merseyside rivals. Again, I've said it so many times, I love history of a ground. I love a ground that has character. And Goodison Park has all these things. I've seen ups, I've seen downs. I mean, they're probably the longest period of time. It's an old, old stadium. Um, it's kept up well, despite looking, they're, they're gonna rebuild it in, in the next few years. But it's a beautiful old ground. It has so much character to it. So many, I guess, memories on that ground there. The Gladys Street end is, is a beautiful end. That's so loud. It's it's in behind the team, it supports them, it pushes them towards goal. Fits almost 40,000 people in as well, so it's not a small stadium by any means. And there, it is a class ground and as such, it has to be up there. And it's depending with its Merseyside rivals and just falling short, unfortunately. But it's a really intimidating ground to go to and as such, it had to be up there in the second place for me. Um, there's so much character the ground has. And then as such, it's, it's Liverpool, it's Anfield, it comes at number one for me. Hold 53,394 people at capacity. So many good memories there. So many great players, great performances on that pitch. Um, they kept renovating, they kept it growing bigger and bigger, and it's even more intimidating nowadays. Um, do never walk alone sometimes. They walk out to the ground. Um, the sounds are awesome. The, the cop end is the best end in the Premier League, in my opinion. And we talk about sucking a ball into the back, and that is the end that will do it for you. The fans are always in behind their team. The atmosphere is always up there with the best in the Premier League. And um, if, you, if you're a player, you'd be wanting to play at Anfield because it's one of the most beautiful grounds. Um, and it keeps growing because there's new renovation being done. 
to, to each end again a nice away and that's tucked away in a corner again to keep them the away fans out of things which is also very very nice and and stands for your authority but no in all seriousness um a, a ground despite being a man united fan i'd love to go to one day because it's one of the most beautiful stadiums in the premier league and something i'd really like to see in the future but um that about does it for this video uh there's my ranking of the top uh, of the premier league teams from the top there at anfield uh, to Kenilworth Road there in 20th place but um, the Premier League's known for its great grounds, known for its great stadiums and uh, it's been a pleasure to go through and sort of look through each ground and you know, compare each ground to each other and, and to come out with, with a winner there being Anfield. Um, if you guys are continuing to enjoy these type of videos, these ranking type videos, these um, different videos away from the podcast, away from the, to the chatting shows, please let me know. Keep liking the videos, keep, keep sharing with friends, keep growing the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and I'll keep doing these types of videos in the, in the future there. Um, but with that being said, um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys uh, for another ranking video maybe very, very soon.